Today I've got a two-in-one spring floral. It could be a swag or centerpiece. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Keep watching! We're starting off with a pine swag and we're going to add some of this burlap ribbon. This came from burlap.com. I'll have the links in the description box if you're interested. These are some floral bouquets that I got from the thrift store. I've got a variety of them, pretty much in the same colors. A couple of them are duplicates and we're going to use those. Here's some more thrifted florals. This is Ashland. I think that came from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. These are thrifted as well. You know, almost everything I have is thrifted. So we're going to start off with this swag. I'm going to put the link up here in the corner so you can see the other um, project that I did with it and see how I put it down on that board. Here is some thrifted eucalyptus garland. I'm going to have several different pieces of that. These are some spring looking picks that I had that are kind of leftovers. Pretty much it's all thrifted. I'm going to show you how I chose to put this down. Now you can do it any way you want. And don't worry about that being pine underneath. Don't let that deter you from watching this video because we're going to cover every bit of that up. So I'm going to use my pine branches to wrap around the end of this garland and cut the little plasticky end off. Nothing there that we that is going to add any value to this. So I'm just going to cut it off and then I'm going to kind of twist it back and forth from the left to the right, left to the right, so that I cover up a lot of this greenery with the eucalyptus garland. We want this to look springy. I mean, you know, pine trees and evergreens, they're here all the time, thus being evergreen, but we want this to be more springy looking, more spring inspired. And so this is a really good way to take a piece that you already had, really stretch that dollar and make something pretty that could last potentially all year. So I'm just going to keep adding this. Now, when I got this thrifted garland, it was cut into pieces. Um, there are a couple of strands that are whole and there are some that are cut into little pieces. So I'm just, with that in mind, I'm finding the pieces that look like they'll fit for what I need. You can use whole pieces and you can certainly find uh, floral garlands at Dollar Tree um, and at the thrift store. So just look for them. I always get mine off season. I've had this garland since probably November and I've been hanging on to it. When I saw it, I saw the potential and it is fantastic quality. I mean, it is really nice quality. So I'm just going to make sure that I have it, you know, kind of extending out the sides a little bit and laying on top of everything. I like to put the greenery down first and then start adding the florals because I want my base to be nice and lush and I love green. I love the greenery. So I'm doing the same thing to the bottom as I did on top. I know I'm a little bit out of camera. It's kind of difficult because my, ter my table is not very um, big in front of me. It's a long table side to side, but in front of me, I don't have a whole lot of room to work. So kind of playing around with my monopod and try to get the camera where you can see everything. I know some people are really annoyed when they can't see everything. So just use your imagination. What I'm doing on the top, I'm doing on the bottom. And you can see here, it's nice and full. Now I only have two of these, so I'm going to add one to the top and one to the bottom. And they're going to be going in opposite directions. It's almost like mirrored. If you imagine a line down the center of your, of the um, arrangement here, then I'm going to do the same thing on both ends. It's going to somewhat mirror what's going on on the top and on the bottom. So that may help you because I know you can't see what I'm doing down there. All right. Now you see. You can use any picks you have, and Dollar Tree has a variety of really pretty picks. Um, generally, I don't know if they have all of their spring out yet, but, you know, I'm working right now with what I have. And these are things I already had, so I suggest that you do the same thing. Think of things that maybe you used at Christmas that could also be used in the spring. So I'm adding in these picks, and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth one a little bit lower on the right than it is on the left and etc all the way down i do have some pieces that are kind of clipped apart that i used in a wreath and i'll show you how to fix that so that you can use that in a thicker piece it's very um simple but sometimes when we're doing things it, you kind of get overwhelmed so you, you don't 
the simplest things seem to escape you, you know, you know how it is. But I don't want you to give up. If you're doing a project and you go, oh, I don't have that much greenery, there's no way I can do that. You certainly can. Use a smaller piece of garland. You could even use, you could even use an old branch from an old Christmas tree. It's that, that would be that simple. Okay, so I'm gonna take these three pieces and I'm gonna wind their wires around each other. Just like this. And then now I have another pick. Now this one is, does not have like five or six pieces like the other ones, but that is okay. As long as we have a representation of that on both sides, I think it looks good. So just be careful if you've got really thin wires that you don't, you know, poke yourself, hurt yourself. I know a lot of us are thin skinned and we don't have a lot of collagen left. I'm almost 50, you know, I'm not too far from that. So I know how it is. Plus I'm fair skinned and we, we tend to get boo-boos pretty easily. You'll see lots of my videos with band-aids on my fingers. But I kind of get in a certain mood when I'm doing this and my mind sort of takes me someplace else. Follow me on my social media. So yeah, my mind goes to another place and I just kind of uh, go with the flow and uh, throw all caution to the wind. All right, I love these. These are really pretty, but it's a different texture and I like that. I think that's gonna add some interest and it's kind of a little flyaway feature and you'll see it again. I'm, I'm sorry, but there it is. I just overlaid it and put it a little bit further down because we're gonna work from the very tips toward the center with these pieces that I don't have a lot of. So I'm just gonna move this up and show you that we're gonna do the same thing down here. I just kind of, you know, fluff it out just a little bit so it's all has a little bit of dimension in it instead of laying completely flat. And at some point after you have wound these branches around the other pieces, you will have areas that are pretty well, pretty tight, tight enough that you can just shove the pick in there without wrapping anything around it. And I love that. It kind of just hangs on to the rest of the stuff you got in there. So now I'm gonna move on to my roses and these beautiful peach roses. I'm gonna put these in threes because they make a bigger impact if you put them in groups. They are a little bit varied. Some are different than others. You could certainly do this with um, any type of flower you like and you could use three different flowers instead of using three of the same thing. But like I said, I'm trying to use the things that I have and uh, because you know, you can't go out and buy new things if you still have a house full of stuff, right? Or a craft stash that's big as a mountain. So I've got to work through the things I have. And I'm so glad because when I find things thrifting, I pick them up because I really like them. So why not use them, right? I mean, why are we hoarding them if we're not using them, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the next flower, the next type that I have here. And I don't have very many of these. I think these are dahlias. Are these dahlias? Some of you probably would know better than I do. And I'm just gonna add those here and there. Then I have one stray white one, I'm putting that there. Then I have these little, they're like um, seed pods or, I don't know. It's just a bunch of different random little seedy looking things. Or maybe little flower buds. And then there's some other greenery that's got a little more of the bluish tint and I'm adding those in. And I'll just continue to do this all over filling in what looks right. The greenery that is similar, I try to keep with those groupings of the three roses. And then I have these little, well, they almost look like a berry. I put those in there. And then get down to my pieces that I only have one of, like this beautiful rose. And it's colored a little bit differently, but I really think it gives some visual impact as well as this one. Very pretty. You got a lot of depth in there with the lighter and the darker colors. And then I have these really pretty white looking picks and they were thrifted. You cannot get these at Dollar Tree. Hey, but Dollar Tree's stepping it up. They're charging us a little more money, but I believe the quality should be reflected. At least that's my dream and my hope. We can dream, right? All right, so I'm just gonna continue around and see I have one little pick here and then I have another little one pick and I'm just gonna put that in there because now that I've had my groupings in there, I can see where I need to add extra pieces where it needs to be a little more filled out. And that's what you do. 
Now it's on this backing for a reason. It makes it easier to manipulate, to work with, to hang. And it also gives you the opportunity to use this as a centerpiece or to hang it as a swag on your door or against your wall, which is, makes this very versatile. I absolutely love this. I love it. The colors are just perfect for my taste. Now I'm gonna take 18 inches of this burlap Dot com ribbon. This is actually a linen and cotton blend ribbon, I do believe, and it is a beige and cream colored stripe. It complements this beautiful farmhouse piece perfectly, I think. I'm going to cut these into dovetails, each one of these, all four of them, and I've decided that there's so much going on with the flowers here, I don't feel it necessary to put a bow. You can certainly do that if you would like. But what I'm going to do is going to be a little different, but I think it still softens and complements the piece. So we're going to fold it exactly in half, and then we're going to go down a few inches. The bigger, the farther down you go with your loop, the bigger the loop's going to be, and the shorter the tails. And I'm a little out of frame, but you see here, there's my loop, there's my two tails. I'm going to use a zip tie to close these off. You can use floral wire, pipe cleaner. Um, a little if you get some strong jute you can use that whatever you want to use and then just fluff it out a little bit just twist it around fluff it out and get it ready to be made into a pick and this is where I'm just making sure that the size is right and that I like it these are some little skewers that I got when I was out thrifting I thought they would be good for crafting and they're really good for these little hot glue right in the center of the ribbon and then after it dries I'm gonna do each one like that and then after they are dried and nice and tight on there you can go ahead and decide where you want to put your little ends it's such a pretty way and, and you know like I had referenced to before a lot of people do not care for bows they don't care for bows but I think that this is a nice way to put that ribbon in there and really give you some more softness and accentuate your colors and really scream farmhouse. I mean, that stripe to me really says farmhouse. And I love this ribbon. So I'm going to have that linked and burlap.com. And then one final piece right here in the end. Just add a little hot glue to the end of the picks if you need to, to hold them in place. But for me, I've got so much going on in here, they stayed nicely. And I think this is a good color combination. What do you think about this beautiful piece? I love it. All right, so give it a final look over. Add where you need to add. Take things away where you need to take things away. And then any of those little pieces of greenery that are left, if you don't want them to show, push them back down into the wreath, just like I'm doing right here. Very easy to do, just twist them and poke them back down in there. No sense cutting them off because you can use this again. So here we have it hanging as a swag that you could use on your wall or your door. And this is how it would look, very lush and full and beautiful. Do you like these colors? Do you prefer like pink, yellow, blue? What colors do you do in the springtime? I love this because they are warm colors. And for me, I love warm colors. I love that in my rustic home. It looks great with the wood doors and the wood trim and our wood floors. It's very warm and inviting. I really like it. And this is my new background. What do you think? I just bought the pieces for my background right from Goodwill. Perfect. Okay, so here we use it as a centerpiece. I've just laid it down here. You can add candles if you would like, but I've just put my candles behind it just to show you how pretty and full this would be just laying down. It's not very tall, so it would be great to be able to look across. Wouldn't this be beautiful for an Easter dinner? or an Easter brunch. It's so cheerful and pretty. You could even add some Easter egg picks in there if you wanted to use this at Easter time. A lot of options with these pieces. Thank you so much for stopping by. 
I hope you have a wonderful, safe, and healthy day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.